Um, actually, this uh, talk is at a very opportune moment after seeing the beautiful library Corvina. And uh, wouldn't it be nice if we could actually extract all the texts in a textual form that are embodied in these beautiful scans of all these works that have so meticulously and painstakingly been uh, composed in the last centuries. And that was actually the idea that Alexander Winkler and I had more than 10 years ago when we both were in Munich and studied Latin. Uh, and we thought, well, uh, Google Books and other initiatives did all these magnificent scans. Now we can uh, peruse all these books from the leisure of our homes and read it. But reading is a very time consuming task, of course. And wouldn't it be nice if we had the text in some uh, computer represented way as well. And we started out and said, let's see whether we can do something about it. I had a number of ideas, mostly turned out to be totally mistaken. But in the uh, course of the last 10 years, actually, um, what wasn't possible then to use OCR and get some of the text out seems to be possible now to a remarkable degree I could never have imagined. And uh, so I'm going to talk about this today. The whole field is called Optica Characterum Recognitio, so also known as OCR. So the idea to teach a computer to recognize the shapes of the glyphs representing the letters. And 10 years ago, it just wasn't possible to do this with the old printings because all of the fonts were not standardized. You couldn't train a modern computer with computer generated fonts. There are all kinds of funny looking glyphs, ligatures and so on. And most of all, you couldn't train any OCR engines. You all know every fine reader, I guess. And this is proprietary software and the free software that was available, mainly Tesseract from Google, it wasn't able to train that. So this talk has a decidedly practical approach. I want you as individual researchers be able to get your own texts. If you find work you are interested in, if you want to do an edition, if you just want to know what was written about, then you might actually sit down and in a few hours avail yourself with the technology available and uh, do it yourself. So I, won't, I will therefore only mention in passing that there is a big project uh, funded by the German Research Foundation under the name of OCRD. The D is for Deutschland or Germany. But this is more geared towards mass OCR and uh, more uh, for the libraries and big institutions. For, if you want to do it yourself, then this is what I'm concentrating at today. And I want to show that the barrier, the technical barrier to use these methods has become much lower. For instance, it's no longer necessary to use a Linux computer. You can use your usual Mac or your Windows computer. And I want to show you also that model training, which is necessary to a certain extent, can be done quite quickly on top of existing models that we are happy to share with you. And also for those of you who are already somewhat into this business, and I know some of you are, how you can adapt the current models for some uh, not so well trained material like cursive printing. Following the lead of Aldus Manutius, uh, some printers became very fond of italics printing. So this is hard to recognize. And also to look whether we could possibly also render the neo-ancient Greek as it is called. So the ancient Greek composed by our humanists uh, fellows with the many ligatures, whether we could that also uh, convert into text. So to give you an example, I'm just looking at one specific printing, a book, Elementa Rhetoricae of Joachimus Camerarius the Elder, that was besides Erasmus, of course, one of the most eminent humanists in the 16th century. There is also an opera camerari project at the University of uh, Würzburg. I think you might be able to see the website now. So, okay, fine. There you can, uh, there, there are more than 950 printings uh, by him 
can there can look can be looked up there. And uh, the idea is to make all of these printings available in text form via OCR as well. So, uh, of course, a good OCR will always depend on a good scan. How do you find a good scan? Some of them are linked from this Opera Camarari e page, but uh, I might say every day new scans become available. And the best thing you could do is if you have some specific example, just search Europeana. Our common European library institution, most of our European libraries uh, give uh, their holdings or at least the catalog items to Europeana. And you might be able to just search there. And I do this here. So immediately you see the pages, the first pages of the different scans, and you see some look better than others. This is the famous or the infamous Google finger here. Yeah, It shows up, so that is not so good. And the others are black and white, also not so good. And you go down here and I look through and what seemed to be the best thing here, it's uh, in the Czech National Library. You wouldn't have found it if you didn't knew that it existed exactly there, but here from the Europeana, you can find it. So let's have a look. How does it look like? And here it is. It's a presentation similar to the virtual library uh, Corbina we had, uh, we had seen before. You can look at one of the pages and they come at different, um, at different uh, uh, magnitudes. Yeah. So actually, this is how it looks like. Fantastic, I would say. Very well readable. So the machine should be able to recognize it. You only have to, to download the images. Um, that is very different from library to library where you can download it. But here you find um, a link to the library itself. And if you go there, you see, you see the pages again. And, uh, from, from there, you are able to download uh, single pages. This is very nice. And it, it also uh, allows you to find some of the, um, the, the uh, URLs and you can download and, and, and use it further. So now you have availed yourself with all of the images. So you just use your favorite download manager. Yeah. And then uh, you should pre-process them a little bit. So there is a free software called Scan Tailor, which I recommend because it allows you to interactively and almost automatically get rid of all the noise at the edges. Here you also see the Google thumb or Google finger. It's, it has been replaced by, by, by it has been masked yeah, by, by, by a brown color, but it's still visible. This is just uh, making problems later. So uh, you just click here, and it will deskew the pages, it will select the content, it will do a margin around of it, and then you can export it again. You might even use the different forms of binarization, where the color images is suppressed and it's uh, rendered as black and white, but that is not really necessary. You could do it later with another program as well. You could even do the OCR nowadays on the on the uh, color printings because every binarization suppresses some kind of features which might be uh, give some hints on the actual letters. So if you have done this, you will export it and import it into another kind of software. And this is actually a very central thing. It's called OCR for all for a specific reason because this was written by my colleagues at the University of Würzburg. Christian Royal is the project manager there. And this is actually the software where you can do all the following steps uh, from, from this package. And it's available on all uh, operating systems in use today. So that is Windows, Linux, and Mac in form of a Docker image. So only minimal technical knowledge is actually required to use it. And here's a website associated with it you find the software, you find handbooks, uh, there, there are extensive uh, tutorials available. And uh, 
If that's not enough, then there are, of course, also uh, email lists and you can ask questions. So if anything that I'm telling you today uh, you like, then it's fine. If not, you can still ask questions uh, and they will be quickly answered. So this is actually an overview of the, um, I, could, I could say this is a kind of dashboard, yeah? the project overview. And you see here the single pages, they have all been imported. And there are several steps that need to be done one after the other. And at the end, you will get the text. You do some pre-processing, that means it will be uh, the pages will be uh, binarized or grayscaled. You can do some additional noise removal, but it's not often not necessary. If you've got a very good scan, you can leave out this thing. You need to segment the page. With segmentation, I mean you have to uh, define the areas where there is text and other areas where there are other where there are images, for instance. Uh, and you have to segment that. This is all mostly automatic. Then the software will segment single lines. The lines can be recognized. And uh, if the recognition result is not too good, you could actually correct the result, train another model, and recognize again. And that is what I'm talking about in the next slides. So here, I have already done some of the things I talked about. So you see this has been grayscaled. And also the other thing is the binarization. You can, it's, it's easier to read if it, if it is a grayscale here. And you, you, can, uh, you can begin to actually uh, edit some text in here. You've got a virtual keyboard with all these strange looking uh, funny glyphs and ligatures. You can add your own just from the big catalog of Unicode. Uh, Unicode characters. And if there is something you cannot easily reach from your keyboard, you just click here and input it here. That is very nice. And I think later we will see that Transcribus has a very similar functionality as well. So, as I said, we like to share our results in an open source way. So, nothing is proprietary. It's it, nothing costs anything. It's uh, there on GitHub for anybody to use. If you download the software, it will come with some pre-trained models. And one model is called Default Antiqua Historical. And that is based largely on two subcorpora of what I call ground truth. What is ground truth? Ground truth are single lines of images, as here, single uh, printed lines together with the exact um, with the exact letters. Somebody corrected them by hand. And this is used to actually train uh, the machine. So the machine is looking at the uh, at one line of text, and this should be this should this is the meaning of this line. And by doing this repeatedly over many steps, the machine is able to learn it. The technology behind it, you heard about it certainly, that is machine learning or artificial intelligence. And the neural networks, all that stuff comes to play here. And we didn't know about it 10 years ago, that it was useful, but uh, everybody talks about it. Talk is about self-driving cars. So the cars have to see the traffic uh, signs and interpret them correctly. Otherwise, you get hit. So that mustn't happen. And you can imagine a lot of progress has been made here. And all of this progress and all of this machinery it could be uh, brought to bear here on this OCR problem as well. That is very nice. And actually, this is without any training. I just pressed on a button. It said ex execute and recognize the stuff. And this was recognized. This is, of course, um, an Antiqua printing with upright characters. And it's almost perfect, I would say. So here is a, here's a comma missing. Here was a comma, but it was recognized as a full stop. So some small things have been incorrectly recognized. On the other hand, that is just the proomium. Most of the book is in cursive, in italics printing here at the right side. And you see now it's a much different image. Um, I think it's at the edge of being useful. You find some words that are right, but most words contain errors. And actually, 
I tried to correct it, but it's too cumbersome. I had to transcribe a few pages from scratch. This is practically not useful for our purposes. Now, formally, it meant trying to transcribe, I don't know, five or 10 pages or even more if you liked, and then train again. And the training took a long time and it was only possible on a Linux machine. So that was a big barrier to the practicing neo it was, It was practical in a sense for computer scientists, but not for, for one of uh, the normal uh, Latinists. But now it's possible to, uh, to actually train on top of an existing model. So what I have been, have been doing here, I transcribed a few pages here and saved that and then hit another button in the software that said train. And I was able to uh, build a new model in a few seconds actually, because it only had to learn these new things and then uh, recognize it again. So this is just what we had before with all the errors in it. And this is what I got afterwards. Actually, I did it in two stages. I just transcribed, I think, 10 pages, and then it, it got very cumbersome because I, I transcribed from scratch. And I, uh, I trained it and recognized it again. And after that, I just had to find the occasional errors every few lines and transcribed a few more pages. Uh, so you, you um, may imagine, here we have a remaining character error rate that is around 1%, it could even get better, but the uh, better it gets, the harder it gets to find the remaining errors. So if you look through here, do you find an error? And I had to look hard. So the R here is missing between men and Constantia. Otherwise it's also quite perfect. So that is very good. Um, I would actually like to go back a little bit and um, show you something. Oh, it's 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 it. I think I have it in I have it in another. Um, I have it here. I have to shift this over. Do you see the project overview now? Yes. Okay. So here, I can go directly to one of the pages where I could start transcribing. So here, this would be this. And here, I could input all kinds of stuff. And I could also input all of these funny glyphs. I can add more glyphs if I want, and other keyboards as well. And I can save this. So this is all very nice. And this is another thing. I'm going to come to the Greek. Here, by the way, is a, an error the machine made in uh, doing the line segmentation. So errors happen, but uh, they are few and you can see them and uh, correct them later. So you know that our fellow humanists at the time, they were very fond of, of ancient Greek as well. Actually, I can, I can uh, enlarge the text here. So this was something I trained on ancient Greek, and you might say, what's the big difference? So it's just another alphabet. Unfortunately, as you might know, the humanists were very fond of the uh, manuscript tradition and introduced a lot of glyphs, of ligatures, and uh, all of this stuff here. You won't find this in a Greek alphabet. This is, uh, this is de, or this is u, and um, it can get very, very bad, actually. Some printers used up to a thousand uh, different types for, for ancient Greek and not all the same. So it, it varies from printing to printing. So what I did here, I got some ground truth that was transcribed by Stefan Reise at the University of Wuppertal. And I found one font uh, made by a Greek person, a computer font, which actually got me some ligatures and trained a model on this. And then I did the same as before with the Latin. I looked at two pages, transcribed them and trained again. And you see, okay, it's, 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 it's not as good as the Latin, but we can get there. So there is hope. And the, um, of course, there are more 
more problems for errors. If you have a wrong breathing mark, the hair here is an air. It has a, it has a, um, I think in English it's called a rough breathing or a, what is the other one? The spiritus lenus, lenis. I don't know the English word for it. So if a breathing mark is wrong, it, it counts as one error. If an accent is wrong, it counts as an error. So it's harder to get the Greek right. But the big, biggest problem is just that we don't have enough training material. So if you want to transcribe this stuff, and if you want to share this with the community and with us, we can train better models. But at least this is the first time I have seen it, that it is possible to actually, by OCR methods, also recognize ancient Greek as printed in the Renaissance. And this is very important because you have Greek in all kinds of Latin works and sometimes even complete Greek works. And um, Stefan Weise even told me that the extant literature in ancient Greek that was written in, uh, in the 15th to 17th century is by an order of magnitude larger than the extant ancient Greek we have from yeah, the ancient Greek time. It's, it's really not widely known. We know that it's true of Latin, of course, but it's also true of ancient Greek. So going back uh, to my presentation. So this is what I, what I did for the Greek as well. I had this existing model from Stefan Weiss's translate, uh, transliteration and transcription and some synthetic material. I trained with two pages of ground truth and applied it, the recognition to the third page. So you should see that from here before to there after, it gets better. And it does get better, but only marginally so. For instance, the de you see here, it's only being recognized as an epsilon. Here's the de. Yeah, that, that was correct, yeah. So the poo was just a poo here. Now it's a poo it gets better, but it, it's not as drastically uh, more correct than the Latin. But this is mostly due to the lack of material. So in the end, of course, we will have some text. And you'll see here that I uh, took the pain to transcribe and train the long S and some other things. And the E, e I, J thing in the ending for Ingeni, E, et cetera. What you do with it is up to you. You can regularize it uh, to modern spelling conventions. And I think um, I, I have seen that uh, Johann Raminger is among the participants. He could probably tell you more about his efforts in that direction. Um, because if you want to search for the text that you produce, you will search for the forms you do have in mind, that is normal spelling. And uh, otherwise, you won't find it. And of course, there are also occasional errors. It would be nice if you could automatically post correct them as well. I think uh, Johan could tell us more about that as well. Uh, if not, perhaps um, look at his website or his blog, or you might actually compose a letter and telling us of your progress, Johan. I'm very interested. What, what else could you do? You could do some kind of named entity recognition, for instance, persons. The, a different program could learn to find persons which are cited. You could do a citation search. You could prepare an edition and just see the rest of this conference, what can be done with digital methods in the field of Neo-Latin. So I'm really looking forward to all of the other things. I just uh, want to mention that um, this work only became possible because of the dedicated work of some individuals I would like to mention. The first is Tom Broyle here. He is now a, a, with NVIDIA, the company that manufactures all these uh, graphical processing units you can't get because uh, many of these uh, bit miners uh, uh, buy them for bit mining. But he did the first program uh, using all these modern technologies, deep learning and um, all the stuff that made it possible to apply it to these early printings. And then there's Christian Royle, and his group at the University of Würzburg who wrote this OCR for all program package in order to lower the technical barrier and to make it available to all of us who are practicing humanists, I would say, not necessarily computer scientists on the side, 
otherwise um, you wouldn't you would have to learn too much and never come to an end before you get to a real interest and then christoph wick who generalized the occupy um, things from tromboil and made it into a state-of-the-art machine it's it's incredible what he did there in a short period of time i also met him in würzburg and um, that we can better that we have these well working recognition models is possible because uh, we have been able to amass a lot of so called drawn truth that is uh, verified transcriptions matched against individual lines. And a few years ago, we published a big chunk of this on Zenodo. So you can have a look at that and use it for your own purposes, but you don't need because we already trained models. If you send us more of your transcriptions, we can send you back and make available even better models. So uh, this is the Zenodo website where all of this has been written up and there's an accompanying um, publication uh, for that as well. So I hope to, to live to the date when I see all of these huge amounts and it, it goes up to uh, 80 or 60% of all printings in the early centuries that have already been digitized where we can also have them in real text form and can search them and can automatically find uh, stuff that interests them we would have never found because we just never uh, knew it existed by some authors we have never heard of this is very exciting to me and uh, i hope uh, we will see it to some in some day like the biblioteca corvina where we can just give them a few words in in a search entry and it finds us all of the accompanying pages where these words or phrases are mentioned <laughs>